We want to give extra attention in this video to the position of the distributor drive shaft of the VW Type 1 engines. If the drive shaft of the distributor is not correctly mounted during the engine overhaul, problems can arise later with the adjustment of the ignition timing. Disassembling the drive shaft is then the only solution. But, you'd rather not do that when the engine is already completely assembled. It is much easier to do it right the first time while the crankcase halves are split. We will show in this video how to disassemble the distributor drive shaft when the crankcase halves are split and when the engine is built up. The next video will explain assembling the drive shaft. To mark the current adjustment of the ignition we use a marker. We will apply a mark to the distributor housing and to the crankcase. This will give us a basic adjustment when we reassemble the distributor. Of course, the ignition will need to be fine-tuned again after you install the distributor. Let's briefly show what the problem might be if the drive shaft is not mounted correctly. We loosen the nut that holds the distributor in place. This allows the distributor to be rotated to adjust the ignition. We remove the distributor cap to make the rotor visible. You can then also more easily loosen the nut on the clamp bracket when the distributor cap is out of the way. Pull the vacuum hoses loose if it's a distributor with vacuum advance. We'll loosen the nut that holds the clamp bracket to the crankcase. This will make disassembling the distributor easier later. Now what is the problem if the drive shaft of the distributor is mounted wrong? First, the look of the engine will not be correct. If it is a distributor with vacuum advance, then the vacuum box is not pointing in the right direction. Functionally, admittedly, this is not always a problem. The distributor, after adjusting the advance, could be in this position. This is not at all in accordance with factory settings. Second, because the distributor is not in the correct position, you may not have room to rotate the distributor to set the ignition. If the distributor is rotated too much clockwise, you will bump into the intake collector, for example. If the distributor is mounted too much counterclockwise, then the fuel pump could be an obstacle. The consequence in both cases is that setting the desired ignition advance is not possible. This is then a real problem. With this 1600 engine the distributor should be in this position. With enough space in both directions to set the advance. To be clear on this 1600 engine, the drive shaft of the distributor is properly mounted, as we show in this image. If not, you can fix that while the engine is fully assembled. Removing the distributor drive shaft on an assembled engine is not without risks. You will also need special tools to do this. Make sure that the mark on the crankshaft pulley that indicates the ignition timing of cylinder 1 is in line with the scene between the two crankcase halves. You can turn the crankshaft pulley using a wrench. We have indicated the mark of the ignition timing of cylinder 1 on the crankshaft pulley with red paint. The green mark is for the top dead center of cylinder 1. These marks on the pulley will be different for each Type 1 engine. In video 6 we will explain how to determine the ignition timing of cylinder 1. This is important to understand.
This is because the red mark on the pulley can also mean that cylinder 3 is ready to ignite. If properly assembled, the copper contact of the rotor will point in the direction of the notch in the distributor housing. Here we show the notch in the distributor housing, the rotor points in the direction of the notch. This should also be the case when cylinder 1 is at ignition timing. In which direction the notch in the distributor points will depend on the type of distributor. Here, the rotor points towards cylinder 1. To remove the drive shaft, you will need to pull the distributor out of the crankcase. You may encounter some resistance, especially if the distributor o-ring is new. Disassemble the distributor along with the clamp bracket. Here you can see the cams that fit into the drive shaft. In this image you can see that the left side is narrower than the right side. This is designed so that you can only mount the distributor one way in the crankcase, and therefore in the drive shaft. The drive shaft has the same dimensions, the slot is not in the middle either. You can therefore never accidentally turn the distributor 180 degrees during assembly. If you could, the ignition could go completely wrong. Here we show the drive shaft in the crankcase. The crankshaft pulley is at the ignition point of cylinder 1. You can see it by the red mark. The narrowest part of the drive shaft is mounted towards the crankshaft pulley. This is how it should be. Do not turn the crankshaft pulley while the distributor is removed. There is a chance that doing so will push the drive shaft upward and irrevocably damage the crankshaft gear. We'll show you how to fix that later. To make things clearer, we'll use this didactic setup. This engine was modified in order to study the working of the rotating parts of the VW Type 1 engine. The distributor with vacuum box is mounted in the crankcase, it can rotate to set the ignition timing. This clamping bracket, which is secured by a bolt and nut, is used to set the position of the distributor and thus the advance. The distributor is driven by a drive shaft. The drive shaft is in turn driven by a gear on the crankshaft. We would like to draw attention to some crucial parts of this system already, which are not immediately noticeable during an overhaul. Especially not if you are doing this for the first time. First, there is an O-ring on the distributor, just below the clamp bracket. It will provide some tension when removing the distributor. This O-ring prevents engine oil from leaking past the distributor. In most cases, on older engines, this O-ring is hardened or broken or not present at all. Second, there is a spring between the distributor and the drive shaft. This spring keeps the assembly under tension and from rattling. Third, the drive shaft of the distributor rests on one or more metal rings. These rings provide a running surface for the drive shaft to keep the crankcase from wearing out. They also ensure that the drive shaft and the distributor interlock correctly. The thickness and number of rings will depend on whether the engine has ever been machined, rebuilt, or not. It can be two rings of 0.6 mm, one ring of 1.25 mm, or if the engine has already been rebuilt, a first ring of 3 mm on the crankcase, and then a ring of 0.6 mm. Consult your VW workshop manual for more information on your type of engine. To disassemble the distributor drive shaft, you need to take out the fuel pump. As you can see, the fuel pump shaft pushes against the distributor drive shaft. So the distributor drive shaft can never come out without removing this fuel pump shaft as well as the fuel pump flange.
Let's get started disassembling the distributor drive shaft. The procedure remains the same for all Type 1 VW engines. Very inconspicuous is the spring between the distributor and the drive shaft. Sometimes it sticks to the distributor, but usually the spring stays in the crankcase. Use a magnet or small gripper to remove the spring from the crankcase. If the drive shaft is mounted incorrectly, consider disassembling it while the engine is fully assembled. We warn the enthusiast, this is a risky undertaking. You may end up damaging the crankshaft gear, and splitting the crankcase may end up being the only solution to solve the problem. As mentioned earlier, to remove the distributor drive shaft from the crankcase, the fuel pump will need to be disassembled. Disconnect the fuel hoses attached to the fuel pump. Loosen the nuts that hold the fuel pump to the crankcase. It is always a good idea to plug up any holes that nuts, spring washers or springs may fall into. Remove the two nuts and the two spring washers. Remove the fuel pump. You can now remove the fuel pump drive shaft from the crankcase. In video 7 we will go into more detail about disassembling and assembling the fuel pump. For now, we'll switch to our AB1300 engine for a moment. You should now be able to remove the fuel pump flange. If the engine doesn't have many miles on it yet, then it's usually not a problem to disassemble the flange. If the engine has been running for many miles, the heat will have cooked the flange in the crankcase. If you try to loosen the fuel pump flange, the bottom part of the flange will remain in the crankcase. If you try to remove this part, pieces of Bakelite will fall into the crankcase. Splitting the crankcase is then the only way to disassemble the fuel pump flange. Now that the fuel pump drive shaft and the fuel pump flange are out of the way, we can pull the distributor drive shaft out of the crankcase. Plugging the fuel pump hole in the crankcase with a rag is recommended. It is not important how the crankshaft pulley is positioned to disassemble the drive shaft. In this AB1300 engine, the distributor drive shaft is mounted wrong, so you should not look at the position of the crankshaft pulley in this case either. On some Type 1 engines, it is recommended that you rotate the drive shaft with its smallest half toward the crankshaft pulley. This would be necessary to slide the drive shaft past the crankshaft gear. So it is good practice to position the drive shaft this way, just to be sure. As mentioned earlier, do not turn the crankshaft pulley when the distributor is disassembled. The drive shaft might move upward and damage the crankshaft gear. If you must do so, push the drive shaft into the crankcase with a rod or with a special tool we will show later, and then turn the crankshaft pulley until the drive shaft is properly positioned. If the drive shaft is mounted incorrectly, then the crankshaft pulley will not be positioned correctly. So don't pay attention to the crankshaft pulley but make sure the smallest half of the drive shaft is pointing toward the crankshaft pulley. You will need a special puller like this one. The link in our web shop for this special tool can be found at the bottom of the video. The head of the puller is slightly too large to fit into the drive shaft. If necessary, sand or file the head of the tool. For our tool, it was enough to sand away the paint. Turn the levers clockwise until you feel resistance. 
Then turn back a few revolutions. Apply a little grease to the head of the puller. The special tool should slide nicely into the drive shaft with no resistance. We take a drive shaft to demonstrate how this will work. You can see that the puller can slide in and out of the drive shaft without resistance. When you tighten the levers, the tool grips the drive shaft, you can then apply a lot of force to pull the drive shaft out of the crankcase. It is important that later, when you want to reassemble the drive shaft, you can remove the tool without the drive shaft coming along. Push the puller into the crankcase and into the drive shaft. Turn the levers on the puller to increase the tension, use a wrench to hold the tool in place while you turn the levers. This way the puller should grip the drive shaft enough to apply force to it. Pull the special tool while turning the assembly counterclockwise with the wrench. This is necessary to pull the drive shaft out of the crankshaft gear. This is because both gears are of the helical type, they do not have straight, but angled teeth. The difficulty here is to leave the metal rings in the crankcase. The rings must not be pulled out of the crankcase together with the drive shaft. The rings can jam behind the crankshaft gear and damage it irrevocably. You should, while pulling the drive shaft out of the crankcase, tap the metal rings loose by knocking on the special tool with a hammer. It's a matter of patience and experience. The rings stick to the drive shaft when you feel resistance when pulling, it may be that the rings are angled and blocking against the crankshaft gear. So, patience and tapping until the drive shaft comes loose without the rings. Here we show the drive shaft of our engine. It's also best to remove the washers from the crankcase. You'll want to center the washers nicely later before mounting the drive shaft and grease them to prevent them from disappearing into the crankcase. We use an old crankshaft now to show what happens when you pull the drive shaft out of the crankcase. The washers tend to come along, but they get stuck on the crankshaft gears. If you then apply too much force to the puller, you risk irrevocably damaging the crankshaft gear. If you have heard something falling in the crankcase, it is such a metal ring. Then don't turn the crankshaft pulley anymore either, the washer could irrevocably damage the rotating part. Splitting the crankcase is then the only option to fish out the metal ring. We did take the rings out neatly, with a magnet, to show how it is done. Here we show how to disassemble the drive shaft when the crankcase halves are split, and the crankshaft and camshaft are disassembled. You don't need any special tools at this point. This is a D1200 engine. The washers can be removed here along with the drive shaft, because the crankshaft is disassembled. This is not the case when the engine is completely assembled. You can see here the two washers from our D1200 engine. You can look at the rings to estimate the wear. These are exactly 0.6 mm as it should be for this D1200 engine and they show no signs of wear. We can just reuse them during assembly. In the next video we will measure all the parts and replace them if necessary. We will also explain the mounting and adjustment of the drive shaft in video 5. Hopefully with this video we have made clear the importance of properly mounting the distributor drive shaft. Adjusting the drive shaft while the engine is assembled is not something you can do without risk. More information about all the parts and tools used in this video series can be found as comments below each video on our YouTube channel. Keep a close eye on our newsletter for new videos and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
See you soon.